Welcome to your Farm and Home Show. My name is Joanna Coles, and this morning we're visiting with Dr. Hannah Tiffin. She's with the University of Kentucky Veterinary Entomologist there. We're gonna talk a little bit about something I feel like cattle producers battle every single year, especially in Kentucky, and that's fly control. Yeah, flies can be an absolute menace, and there's a lot of different species of flies, and you know, they all kind of work differently too, so. You know, there's not a silver bullet where you do right. one thing and you're gonna get rid of all your flies all season. But is it important to try to manage those flies because they can cost producers money? Yeah, exactly, and they can cost producers money in a whole you know, host of ways that we might not see right away. You know, the obvious ones are with pink eye, right? But, you know, down the line we can have uh, longer term issues like they're not putting on weight as efficiently because mm -hmm. they're, they're bothered by these flies, right? Yeah, and so we definitely want to make sure that we keep all the pounds on those animals and as healthy as possible. But to do that, we probably need to take a, a multi-level approach. Exactly. So this is something we call integrated pest management. And essentially it means that we're using a variety of different tools in order to combat pests. Um, the reason we use a variety is because things like flies especially are really good at developing resistance. So we want to combat these pests with multiple different types of tools and when we're using chemicals, we want to rotate our chemical compounds so that they're not getting resistance to those chemicals. Um, and then we want to use a variety of different types of tools too, so that we're not just relying on only the chemicals. So using things like, um, even like fans. So some fly species aren't as good of flyers, same with our, our midges. So they're not as good of flyers if we have fans in the barn that can help keep some of the fly populations away from the cattle. Yeah, and so a lot of people say, well, I use ear tags, mm -hmm. but unfortunately our fly season in Kentucky is longer than the efficacy of those ear tags. Exactly. So, and that's something we have to, you know, definitely look at the label of these, of these different tools that we're using. Ear tags can be great. I mean, you, you punch them in the ear and then your, your cattle are protected, right? But they're only protected as long as the ear tag works. So that's why we have to know how long that's supposed to be effective on our cattle and still keep an eye on them as well and then recharge or get new new ear tags and replace those um, so that our cattle are still protected or you know change with different types of chemical applications yeah. um, and making sure each year that we're rotating the type of chemicals in our ear tag so we're not using the same ear tag every single year and potentially getting resistant fly populations. Absolutely, and they really need to look at the active ingredient because if you change brands or colors, um, it still could be using the same chemical. Mm -hmm. um, so we need to make sure that we're rotating that so we're not building those super re resistant flies. Exactly, and um, this is the, the website I would love for you to share with the viewers where you can go into this website, you can say what kind of animal you're trying to protect, so you could put in cattle, um, you can even put in something specific like beef cattle mm -hmm. and then you can say what you're trying to protect against. So we would put in um, either all flies or we can have like specific flies, face flies. And then it's going to tell you a list of different chemicals so that you can pick from those different chemicals and rotate through them through time. Yeah, and sometimes that's difficult because we get a product, we like that product, but it's important to switch it up um, just to make sure that we're not wasting our money exactly. and that the cattle are actually getting treated. But there are other options. There's back rubbers, mm -hmm. there's like actual sprays, um, some fly control through the mineral. So there are other options to utilize. We would just encourage producers to find which one, which method or methods work best for them. Exactly, and, and using a combination of methods is really important. Um, we also want to consider manure management and landscape management. Mm -hmm. So trying to have, you know, a lot of these flies really prefer to have um, some wet manure, right? That's what they often lay eggs in, that's what they breed in. So if we're reducing the amount of moist manure that's around on the property that flies can use, that's going to really help our fly problem as well. So, you know, some people are spreading manure on the fields and that's great, but if it's spread a little bit too thick, that can still have a fly problem because it can still be too moist. So spreading it a little bit thinner so that it can dry out faster would have less flies. Yeah, and a lot of times we don't think about those type of things that would help because this is a long game. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, not any one product is gonna get rid of all of your flies or all the species of flies. And so really finding which ones that you have the biggest problem with and then finding through that website or by visiting with your extension agent to figure out what's the best protocol for your farm. Yeah. All right, well, we certainly appreciate you visiting with us today. And if you have questions about fly control, please contact your local extension office and we can come up with a plan that works best for your farm. We appreciate you watching the Farm and Home Show and hope you have a great day.